What's up, Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Tesla Spy and the overall market and talk about why we're going to be looking for some interesting volatility tomorrow as we just got some big earnings from AMD and Google, how this may affect the market moving forward. But just know that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out my Weeble link. If you deposit any amount of money, you're guaranteed 12 free stocks. If you deposit $500 or more, you're guaranteed 20. If you deposit $2,000 or more, you're guaranteed 40. The offer ends very soon in just two days. Anyways, now let's talk about what's happening with the market. So one thing worth mentioning about Tesla is we got a bit of a dip as we predicted. I was saying this in the morning, we might see a little bit of a dip. And Tesla failed at 260, I called out this imbalance, which is where our main support would be, close to 255 to 256. That's very close to, Tesla, that's very close to where Tesla ended up dipping to. But then buyers came back. So generally, this setup does lead to a little bit more upside in the morning. But whether or not that happens is going to be dependent on some data. So I'm going to break down the data that came out, how this could affect Tesla moving forward in the markets. In just a couple of minutes, I'll also be going over the charts. But just know that we first have to talk about all these other factors. So um, I just want to first say that for the way the market was moving today, we saw most sectors were actually pretty lackluster. We saw finance that was pretty weak, not to mention health and utilities. But the main sector was tech. Tech was leading the market up. And because tech has such a big weight in the markets, it really adjusted those algorithms to help us start pushing. So the Microsofts, the Googles, the Alphabets, the Metas, the Amazons, they were pushing the market up today, despite the fact that the other sectors were kind of weak. So just keep that in mind. Now, I just want to make it very clear that as far as the way the market's going to move, we had some big earnings that came out and we have more that are also coming out. We just had AMD, Alphabet slash Google, Snap all announce their earnings. And then for tomorrow, which is going to be Wednesday, we just have like Caterpillar, very minor ones in the morning. But then after the market closes, we have Microsoft, Meta, Coinbase, and a bunch of others announcing earnings. So get ready for all of those. Uh, the big one is going to be these ones to affect the market tomorrow morning. So let's talk about them. How did AMD do? Unfortunately, AMD did not do too well in terms of their guidance, despite the fact that most other things were quite good. Now let's let's clarify this. So EPS was as expected, 92 cents adjusted. Revenue is at $6.82 billion above expectations. However, there's a big however. When you look at what they announced, uh, they saw some good growth in terms of their data center business. This was very exciting in the beginning, but then this news came out right over here. So they told us that they are expecting $7.5 billion in sales in the current quarter in line with the consensus expectations of 1.16 uh, for EPS. That's the adjusted EPS uh, and also with revenue at about $7.54 billion. Now, yes, it's aligned with what expectations for guidance, but... Overall, it's going to be a 22% year-over-year decline for the December quarter. So yes, guidance is what we're expecting, but it's going to be a quite a big decline compared to what we saw last year. And that is why investors are not as excited about that. That did not really excite investors. They ended up selling their shares, and that's why the share price ended up dumping. So we're looking for a big decline year-over-year year when it comes to their overall uh, guidance. The market's very forward-looking. And they know that Q4 is not may not be as strong compared to what we saw last year. And that's why the investors were not as excited. For Alphabet slash Google, however, they did relatively well. When it comes to their earnings, we saw for the, uh, the quarter ending in September, basically, their earnings are up 35% with the EPS of about $2.12 above the $1.85 per share expectation. Revenue is at $88 billion, so 15% above what we're expecting at $86 billion, so that's bullish. And then other revenues were up about 11%, so that's for search and other revenues of $44 billion. YouTube ad revenue is up about 12.4%, at $7.95 billion. And other forecasts are up, once again, 22%. So that's bullish news, not to mention a lot of talk about AI. They just screamed AI again and again, and they absolutely loved it. So Investors are very excited. That's why Google's share price is up quite a bit right now. That is what's going to carry the markets. So just to clarify, Google is much bigger than AMD. It's more impactful for the broader markets. That's going to be helping the Metas, the Amazons, and then other stocks out there start to run. Not because it solely helps the market run. It has more to do with the way in which the algorithms are being adjusted because of it. So the whole algos for the ETFs are going to be running more. Now, for some sectors, such as semiconductors and ships, like NVIDIA, like ARM, 
uh, Super Micro, they're going to show signs of a little bit more weakness because of what just happened with AMD. So just keep that in mind. Some sectors may be a little bit weaker tomorrow, but for the most part, the market has more upside potential. Now, there's another catalyst. Uh, tomorrow is going to be Wednesday, October 30th, 2024. We're almost at the end of October. Time is absolutely flying. But just know that at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the GDP numbers coming out. We have the growth rate, uh, not to mention the GDP prices. So this may lead to more volatility. So get ready for that at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, an hour before market open. When it comes to other factors, not really much else that's going on. So we'll have to see how this ends up going, but be very, very patient nonetheless. But that's what I'm seeing for the GDP numbers. This may cause some volatility. Now, right now, the market is at greed. That's making up the majority of sentiment as there's still buyers who are present. Momentum is still at greed as the market's pushing, approaching all-time highs. And the, <coughs> excuse me, and the S&P 500 is still well above its 125 daily moving average. On top of this, the puts to call option ratio is at neutral, not really shifting too much. And the VIX remains a little bit neutral, getting closer to its 50 daily moving average, still kind of weak. So right now, the market remains more bullish because of Google mainly. As far as Tesla goes, there's not much going on with it. They are planning on delivering an extra uh, 500,000 plus EVs next year. And their way of doing that is just expanding their capacities. That's very, very bullish news, at least for us. That's what they were talking about during their earnings. So I'm seeing a lot of headlines talking about this. So we're looking at the current capacities that are going to be increasing, especially in Texas and Nevada, especially when, as we start to see the expansion of the Tesla Semi and then the next gen platform very, very soon. So that's very, very good news, especially as they're trying to expand their capacities and their growth. And with these ambitions, it could be very bullish if they end up achieving those goals. The Cybertruck is also very bullish, so can't wait to see what else comes out with that. As far as Tesla goes, we have 79 million in volume, a little bit below average. So that's why Tesla's a little bit lackluster, because now volume is slowing down. Remember, we were getting 200 million volume, then 168 million, then we were getting 120 million. Now we're only at 79 million, so now it's below average. Volume is slowing down. Short volume is not really shifting too much. Uh, it went up a little bit, but it's not that crazy. But everything else is still about the same. Volume is the only thing that's slowing down. Canaccord Genuity gave Tesla a buy rating. Stifle also gave Tesla a buy rating. There's still lots of bullish analysts out there. Uh, the price price ratio is dipping a bit because Tesla's losing a little bit of strength. And then historically on Wednesdays, we're only green about 48% of the time. November tends to be a stronger month for Tesla historically, so we'll see how that ends up going. And then we also tend to see more volatility at 1 p.m. and also during the second to last hour of the trading day. So that's when we tend to see more interesting price action. So with that being said, what do I see for the share price moving forward? What is my opinion of Tesla and et cetera? Uh, in my personal opinion, I think that Tesla's are trying to rebound with the broader markets. So there's going to be an attempt to push going into tomorrow. But whether or not we break out depends on different factors. It still is very possible that Tesla makes a lower high compared to this high. So it pushes up, makes a lower high, and starts dipping lower. That's always a strong possibility. But if we end up losing key supports, we could be dipping back down towards 253. So we'll see how things end up going. In my opinion, I think that Tesla is going to, once again, attempt to push higher. I think we're going to be trying to push back up for this 260 area. And I think we're going to break this. So I think we're going to be trying to get back up to this next uh, bar right here to the 262 area. So I think we're going to be pushing up here. And we'll see if we get a rejection or not to start dipping. So watch and see how it ends up moving. So look for an attempt to push up to the 262s. If Tesla breaks this, we could go a little bit higher, but just be careful because we could still make a lower high compared to this high here, which could cost us to dip even lower later on. If we lose 260, we look at 256 as our support in 253. And then we have 262, 265, and 268 as resistance. I think we push a little bit higher tomorrow morning, just like how we did today. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, we might be approaching the 262s and 265s, but then we might see Tesla slow down as the day goes on because of the fact that volume is slowing down and the fact that Tesla's already up so much. So even if Tesla does slow down a bit in terms of its overall trend, that's completely normal after how much upside we got because when you look at the charts, it's still up like crazy. Like if you look back, you know, a couple of uh, weeks ago, Tesla was actually back at much lower levels. If you look at last week, we were actually in the, uh, you know, 190s, the 200 area. So now that we're gapping up and pushing, this could dip a little bit more before it attempts to bounce. That's why I'm not too worried. So that's what the overall trend is suggesting. So once again, just to clarify, tomorrow morning, we could rebound a bit at first, try to get back up to 262 to 265. And then after that, we might see Tesla slow down a bit because of the fact that volume is declining. I want to make that very, very clear. For the others out there, we have SPY. So let me just call out that SPY is doing a very, very good job at holding up thus far. Um, just to call this out, we are 
riding this rising wedge very, very nicely. So you guys can see we have a rising wedge just like this. And this rising wedge is once again leading to very, very interesting price action. So when I zoom out all the way, we bounced off the support here, bounced, 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 bounced very, very well. And we're holding support very, very well. So as we're testing this trend line of support, we're trying to bounce off of this. This remains more bullish nonetheless. If we lose 580, we're looking for an attempt for 578 and 575. If we break and hold above 582, and as long as that holds, we're looking for 585 as our target. My gut is telling me that we're going to likely see an attempt to push higher for 585. Let's look for a little bit more upside as our greatest potential. So I think the odds are favoring that SPY is going to be pushing back up for 585 as the most likely case, especially if we manage to hold above this resistance. But even if we do push higher, that does not guarantee we're just going to run forever because this is a tough resistance. And every time we've hit 584 to 585, we have rejected. So look for more upside for the 584 to 585 area, then we'll see if we reject off that because every time that happened historically, that has uh, we've rejected at that level. So look for a little bit more upside and then followed by some tough resistance. For ES, it's the same thing. Essentially, we're just range bound. I anticipate it's going to get very close to the 5,900 area. And we'll see if we get a rejection or not off that resistance. Look for more upside. If we get that rejection, we're going to be dipping back down to 5,880, followed by 5,860. If you hold above this, we're looking for a push. My gut tells me you push up to 5,900, then we might be dipping after that. So give it some time. For others out there, we basically have NVIDIA. NVIDIA is very range bound, but like I said before, it might be a little bit lackluster after the news that came out involving AMD's earnings. So it might be looking for a test of the 140 area, then a rebound to 142 and lots of consolidation for now. That's all I'm seeing as we're forming a nice pennant. So I think that's what NVIDIA is most likely doing. A lot of sideways price action. The main range is between 138 and 144, but I don't think we're going to be we're going to see that much of a spread. It's more likely it's going to get tighter and tighter before we see a bigger move. That's what I'm seeing for NVIDIA for now. For Bitcoin, the market's trying to push, so this could actually help Bitcoin as well. We're looking for 73,000 to be retested. We'll see if it breaks or not. As of right now, it looks bullish. There's no sign of us rejecting quite yet. As we dipped, we got bought back up, so Bitcoin could be looking for a retest of 73,000 or above for the time being. For NQ, NQ is pushing very, very nicely as we're making higher highs and higher lows. As long as we don't lose 20,600, we favor upside. I think 20,800 is coming, maybe even above that. So there could be a little bit more upside coming, but we'll see if we get a slowdown. There is still that bearish divergence that remains. But we'll watch and see 20,800 for a bit of a push as tech is very excited thanks to these earnings. There could still be quite a bit more upside for now. For others out there, we have the QQQ, which is technically remaining a little bit more bullish. We're holding support very, very nicely. We still have this wedge that's forming technically, but we haven't really seen this pan out all the way. We have an imbalance to fill up towards 503. Then we have this a resistance at 505. My gut is telling me this is going to be pushing for basically 502, which if we break, we're looking for basically 505. If you reject and end up losing 500, we're looking for a dip back down towards uh, 498 then 496. So this still looks more bullish for 502 than 505 in my personal opinion. So I think there's a good chance that the QQQ looks more bullish. And I think we might try to continue to push from here. Uh, I think that Google is going to lead the way up higher for the markets. And I think that this has more upside potential. Apple looks like it's going to be kind of range bound approaching its earnings. We're stuck between 231 and 235. Might just continue to shuffle in this range for now before we see a much larger move. Just keep that in mind, guys. That's what I am currently anticipating as the most likely case for Apple. So we might just see a lot of sideways price action. There is some upside potential for 235, but I anticipate that sideways price action is looking more probable. So we'll see how things end up going from here. For others out there, we have Netflix, which is looking more bullish thanks to tech. If we were to lose 753, we're going to be looking for a dip. And as long as we're above that, we're favoring a push for 760, then 765. So I think the chart remains more bullish. For CELH or Celsius, we're on a bit of a downtrend right here, making lower highs and lower lows. So we got a break past 32. If we don't break that, we're looking for a dip back down towards 30.8, not to mention the 30 area. I think that the odds favor Celsius dipping a little bit more, might be dipping slowly back down towards the 30.8 area. Then we might see a lot of consolidation after that. Unless we break 32, I think this is favoring a little bit of a dip. So just watch for that very carefully. But it's not that volatile. It's kind of like tight simultaneously. For Palantir, we are kind of flat right here. We hit some tough resistance at 45, which is what we called out last week. If we don't hold above 45, there could be a retest of about 44.3 coming tomorrow. So we might be looking for the 44s before it attempts to rebound after that. Uh, if we break past 45, we're looking for basically 45.5. My gut tells me that the 44s are coming before it attempts to rebound. So watch and see how things end up going for more downside potential. 
For Supermicro, Supermicro is once again rejecting off the 200 EMA right over here. Um, 49.69 is our resistance. If we don't hold above that, we're looking for a move back down. Because, because of the fact that AMD is dipping quite a bit, this might slow Supermicro down. And the odds are favoring 48 coming all over again. 47.64 to 48 is going to be our target. We'll see if it bounces off that or not, but we still favor downside. For Rivian, we're actually kind of rejecting as well, kind of similar to Tesla. I do anticipate it's going to rebound off our 50 EMA as long as we don't lose 10.47. So look for an attempt to get back up towards 10.7 right over here. Uh, this 10.7 area might be retested. This is where we had previous resistance. So the 10.75 area is going to be my targets. I think we might be coming right back up there. And then we could be looking for a rejection very close to that range. You could measure this with the Fibonacci retracement just to kind of see like exactly where this is going to be going. So if you do draw, draw it out, that's going to be like something that you could be um, doing. But for now, this is what I'm basically anticipating. So we could draw it out just like this just to see where this is going to be going to. Um, we could be retesting our 0.618 area that's very, very close to our 10.75 area before we see a little bit of a dip. So just keep that in mind. For others out there, we also happen to have SoFi. SoFi is currently just range bound. It did dip a little bit after earnings came out, unfortunately. So I think that we're just going to be looking for a test of 10.29. We might be just kind of consolidating. We need to break past 10.8 to turn back up, but this is favoring downside a little bit more. So the lower 10s could be coming after what we saw. So look for a little bit more downside, and we'll see what the reaction happens to be from there. For the IWM Russell 2000, we are in a very interesting phase. If we lose 221, we're looking for a dip for 220, followed by 218. If we hold up 221, we could attempt to rebound for 223+. plus. My gut is telling me with these wicks forming here, we're going to try to hold our support and try to rebound for 223. So the odds favor a little bit of a bounce is the most likely case. Um, for others out there, we also have, let me just double check this, um, AMD. AMD is also going to be another one that's very important. It's dipping right now, seeing a big rejection off the 168 area. Unfortunately, after earnings, it's not doing a good job at holding up. So I'm favoring a move all the way down towards 152, then 150 for a little bit more downside. For ARM, it's the same thing. Essentially, we were trying to rebound only to reject. So I think the odds are favoring this dipping a little bit as well. If we can't hold above uh, basically the 157 area, we're going to be looking for a dip back down towards uh, all the way down to about 152, followed by 150 would be my target. So I do anticipate some downside on ARM. For a coin, this is range bound essentially. So if you look at the ranges right over here, you could see um, we tend to bounce off 216 and we tend to get rejected off 225. It might try to rebound with Bitcoin back up to 222 and just continue to consolidate in this range. We'll have to see which way it breaks to determine what the much bigger move is going to be. As far as Amazon goes, right now it's getting led up with its friend Google. Google's helping this pump quite a bit. We need to lose 191 to turn back down. Otherwise, this is favoring major upside. I favor it's going to be pushing all the way up towards 194.8 to 195. So that's going to be looking more bullish. For Meta, we look more bullish as well. We got a big break thanks to Google. This is going to be helping tech. We're looking for 605 and 610 as a potential targets, and even above that if that breaks. So we could be looking for the 610s very soon if we break 605 and hold above it. Microsoft is looking at resistance around 436 if that breaks. We're basically going to be looking for our next target around this 438 area, then 440. If we lose 435, we're looking for 434 as our next target, but this is looking bullish, and 438 becomes a stronger possibility. For Google, we have 180 as our resistance. If this breaks, we're looking for basically 182, followed by 185 as our resistance. If 180 fails, still we're looking for 178 as our support, so I favor upside for 180. I think 182 is going to be the most likely case. Um, for others out there, we have DJT. <laughs> Excuse me. DJT has been pumping very nicely, but it is, it is due for a small dip. It's about the 47.5 area if 50 fails us. It could dip to 50, if not 47, then try to bounce off that. We'll see if it bounces off 50 first, though, but just give it some time to develop. The VIX is range bound, but looks a little bit more bearish. If 19.35 fails us, we're looking for a dip back down towards 19 flat. And we'll see if it bounces or not. The 10 year looks a little bit more bearish, which is where we have this gap to fill down here. That would be a little bit more bullish for the markets. The dollar is also rejecting here. If it loses 104.26, it's more bearish, which also tends to be bullish for the markets. So just know that the 10 year and the dollar are not, not affecting the market as much as they typically do. So I'm not as worried about those, but I just want to call them out just for this video. So with that being said, Tesla should try to rebound with the market tomorrow, but just be careful because of the fact that volume is slowing down for Tesla. It's not getting as much volume as before. So it might not see a massive move up unless we get some kind of catalyst. So the odds are favoring a little bit of a push back up towards the 262 area. 
uh, then we'll see if we get a bounce or not so give this the time it needs 262 to 265 should be coming very soon and we'll see how it goes but with that being said i thank you all so much for listening please have a great day night or evening i hope you guys like the new setup my plan is to basically keep my setups the same uh, as they typically are for my morning videos because i have to upload the videos very fast so maybe the quality might not be as strong but uh, for my later videos during the afternoon and evening, I'm going to be trying to use my new setups to make the videos more high quality and so much better because I have more time. So I just want to make that very clear, guys. That's what my plan essentially is. So I just want to say I really appreciate you guys. I really want to improve my quality. And I just want to say I thank you for your attention. So I'll see you guys tomorrow before the market opens. Get ready for some GDP numbers. And we'll see how things end up going. Once again, my view is bullish of the markets uh, because of Google's earnings. Some semiconductors could be a little bit weaker because of AMD. Besides that, the market remains in favor of bulls for the time being, just for now. Things could change later on after the election, but for now, I just have to be very unbiased. Thank you for listening. I'll see you guys tomorrow and peace out.